Great. Okay, so if I, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. Uh, Good. All right. We don't know what we're doing. So. <laughs> I'm going to read a little synopsis at the beginning for the beginning of the meeting, and then Sarah's going to take over as the chairman. So this meeting of a historic district commission will take place in a webinar format through Zoom. The chair of the commission is Sarah Moriarty. The host of the webinar is the building official. Staff attending this meeting include Peter Zavinglis and Linda Galetta. Anyone speaking should state their names prior to speaking each time. The panelists in this webinar meeting will be the commission members and the building staff. Panelists who would like to comment on an item should indicate such by using the icon to raise hand at the bottom of the screen. After a panelist raises their hand, they will be able to comment one at a time when called upon by the chairperson. Panelists should mute their microphones until called upon. Panelists calling into the meeting by telephone may raise or lower their hand by pressing star nine. To mute or unmute, you can press star six. To make a motion or second a motion, commission members can raise a hand and be acknowledged by the host or chair. To vote on a motion, commission members will be called upon individually by the chair to vote. The public can participate in the meeting during the public communications agenda item. The public will be asked to raise their hand during public communications if they want to speak at this time by using the icon to raise hand at the bottom of the screen. The public will be called upon by the host one at a time and will be able to speak during this time. Attendees must identify themselves prior to speaking. And that is it. All right, so I will call the meeting to order on January 19th at 7.03, and I will uh, move Bill Ferguson up to our vacant permanent member seat so that he can vote. And Todd, if you can read the call. Muted, Todd. Todd? Got to unmute yourself, Todd. Okay, is that better? Yes, that's better. You could have read my you could have read my lips, you know. <laughs> All right, so you got the first part, right? Okay, let's start over. Dear Matt, please publish the following public notice for one insertion on Monday, January 11, 2021. Town of Groton, notice of public hearing, historic district. <laughs> The Historic District Commission will hold a public hearing on Tuesday, January 19th, 2021 at 7 p.m. virtually via the Zoom platform to hear the following applications requesting a certificate of appropriateness. HDC 21-01, 424 High Street, Raymond Williams, owner, Mirza Smajic, applicant, PV Solar System, pin number 26191433281. A Zoom meeting link will be posted to the town's website meetings calendar or it can be attended by visiting www.zoom.us webinar ID 820-1457-6390 password 664146 or by phone 1312-626-799. Applications are on file and available for public inspection during normal business hours at the Planning Department 134 Groton Long Point Road, Groton, Connecticut dated this 11th day of January, 2021 at Groton, Connecticut, Todd Brady, secretary. If you have, yeah, that's good enough. Thank you. So I will call HDC 20-7451 Cliff Street, Thomas and Vigula, France, owner's applicant, Stonewall. This application was continued from the last meeting. Um, their neighbors, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Elmer had submitted a letter and um, we ultimately continued this item um, and now have an, a chance to hear from the actual applicants. So if Mr. and Ms. LaFrance would like to make their presentation. I saw them in the audience, Mr. and Mrs. LaFrance. Unmute it. Oh, oh there yeah. you go. Okay, okay. sorry. Now we're we can hear here. you. Okay. This is our first Zoom meeting. Yeah, so. <laughs> we're not great at this. <laughs> no worries. All right, now how do we start? So I would start by just, you know, summarizing your application and then Peter is controlling what we see on the screen and he's gonna walk us, he's gonna scroll through photos and you can tell us what we're looking at in the photos as you describe your project. Okay. Okay, we wanted so here, to- you're gonna show us okay. here. Oh, we're gonna to, uh, to construct a dry stone wall on the Northwest corner located at 51 Cliff Street wall to be, um, what's, um, what's that? I can't, 
constructed it. mostly from the original um, structure foundation stone. The stone wall will join the three stone markers noted on the plot plan from Charlie Johnson, running west to east 22 and a half feet and running north to south 52 feet, height 24 to 36 inches, width around 24 inches. Okay. Okay, there's yes, the picture, there you go. So this is where the proposed stone wall is going? That's correct. Okay. Okay, that's now present. That's what we, we cut this back. It had been overhanging here oh, for about seven years. It is about three feet that was overhanging, three to four feet that we cut back here, oh, about a month ago. Okay. That's what it looks like now. Okay. This is the plot plan from the town of Groton. So looking at the bottom right corner. Yes. That's the plot. Yeah. Right there. Yes. Right there. You got it. That would be it. And how, so it's that angle and then it jogs to um, I don't see a compass, so I'm, there we go. So kind of uh, Northwest and then it stops where? Well, it goes from the curb line. If you go from the curb line on Cliff Street, mm -hmm. it goes into the stone marker and then it goes right along. And then it goes south. South, yeah. Can you see it? <laughs> My saying that <laughs> properly. Yeah, you got it with your arrow, so you did have it. So I think we have a better picture. I, I kind of drew out a little plot plan. It's coming up net after that. Yeah. Oh, that was Site our plan. response letter. Yep. Oh, so there it is right there. There it is. So you can see Cliff Street, which is a little on the top. And then uh, 51 Cliff Street, where, where we are. And then to the left is the 63 Cliff Street, which is the Elmers. The grade in area would be the wall. And you can see the curb line, which is the double line. If you go down a little, I, I did a little ledger that kind of shows you what the lines are over to the right. A little more to the right. There you go. So the double lines was the existing curb, the larger lines and the brakes was the actual property lines. Then the if you go back. I'm pointing out it on my screen, but you can't see me pointing. <laughs> then you have the proposed stone wall was the double dotted line. And then below that is the existing monuments. That's the squares below. You'd have to bring it up a little bit to see it so the, the other way. That's one, correct? Yeah. And there's another one. Yeah. And the other one is in the middle of the trees. There. Right there. Um, and that's why we wanted to extend it to the curb and in keeping with how all the uh, precedence of all the neighboring properties, they maintain up to the curb. As you can see, the Elmers have the trees there and some stones and things themselves. So, yep. Okay. Are, Peter, are there more pictures as you scroll beyond? Yes. Okay. So, here you can see I've circled up on the right by the wheelbarrow. There's a circle. There's a, a marker, stone marker there. And then to the left of that in the corner, you can barely see a little circle. Um, nope. 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 The, oh, well, there is one way back there, but you can't see it. Well, oh, there well, you go. There it is right there. Right there. That's yep. the other marker. It's kind of in the bushes a little bit, so it's kind of hard to see. Um, you couldn't see that for seven years, those markers. We finally cleared we it. We finally off. cleared it so you could see them. And then there's some more pictures that kind of show a little closer, I think. I can't remember what I saw. Yeah, right here. There should be one right. No, that's not yeah, there. That's, that's the front. A, that's a stone marker showing the curb is right to the end of his white fence there. Yep. 
There's this one. Yeah, you're getting close. You're getting close. There's there it is, right there, there, right there. It's yeah. not completely dug out yet. You got to clean more. But that would be the probably the um, south marker there. How tall is the wall going to be? Twenty-four to thirty-six inches. <laughs> This gives it, next one gives a kind of an idea on the style of the wall that we were going to continue with. That's on part of our driveway. So that came out of the original house, that stone, and I still have some more of that. So just a dry stacked. Yes, yeah, a dry wall. That's correct. This is, um, there's, a, there's a marker there as well. We've cleared those. Three trees. That three was, trees. Yeah, they were put on our property, uh, property. He planted those trees on our property there. So we wrote a letter and asked permission to take them out and he gave permission to take them out. So we did. That this was, was the overgrowth. You can't even see all that group of stones or we, as you can see, but further back, you could actually see how it was cut back. Yeah, you couldn't see any of the markers along there until we just cut it back. We hired an arborist to come in and make sure it was properly done. This was prior to um, uh, when we first purchased the property before we built, there's nothing but you can't, it's not a very good picture, but there's nothing growing there to the curb at all. <clears throat> That's all the town's property. I think that's it that I sent. I did send um, Sarah some other pictures, I think a picture of the actual stone marker, what it actually looks like. Um, okay. But I wasn't quite sure if, see, there's the one that kind of gives it. But, yeah. And above that are the responses to Mr. Elmer's concerns. So Peter, why don't we jump back to Mr. Elmer's letter so everyone can refresh their memory. And then we'll take a look at Mr. and Mrs. LaFrance's responses. It's, uh, there it is right there. Okay. Right here. Okay. Everyone good? Uh, give me one more second. Oh, sorry. Didn't mean to rush it on. Okay, got it. Do, um, you know, would it be best, Linda, if I just read this letter in the record? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, sorry, my contacts are bothering me. Um, dear sir, this letter is in response to Mr. Elmer's letter to Mr. Zanarini, 1-4-2021, regarding my application to enhance the curb appeal of my property by installing a beautiful stone wall along the property line between Mr. Elmer's property line and mine. As Mr. Elmer has stated that he has no overall problem with the construction of a wall between the two properties, I will attempt only to alleviate the concerns he has with my proposal as noted in the letter from Mr. Elmer to Mr. Zanarini. Concern number one, referencing the existing stone boundary markers west to east, Mr. Elmer's concern seems to be that he wishes that the wall not extend in an easterly direction beyond the stone marker. It is my intention to extend the wall out to the curb line. The extension of the wall to the curb would not cause any interference with the Elmer property. The choice of our extending the wall out to the curb matches the precedents already set by a majority of our neighbors. <clears throat> Excuse me, a majority. A majority of our neighbors use of that area referred to as the town right of way. 
Furthermore, I'll match the stone covered areas across the front of my home at 51 Cliff Street. As this part of my proposed wall in question does not encroach any part of the owner property, I therefore request your approval. Concern number two, regarding the stone markers that Mr. Elmer has stated have been in existence since the 1800s and that he would like to protect for future reference, I'm sure we can maintain the current existence in placement of the markers by constructing the wall to abut both the south edge line and the east edge line of the border markers along both the east and the west as well along the north and the south boundary with complete accessibility to all three markers. It is expected that any encroachment of plants and or shrubbery will be kept free and clear of the center line of all three markers vertically to the height of said plants and or shrubs. Concern number three, the rocks mentioned in concern number three replaced there by Mr. Elmer is a divergence of the stormwater running across his property. These stones will be removed or utilized within the new wall construction and therefore will eliminate the need for concern number three. Okay. Well, what about the, there was some measurement differential that they talked about, Mrs. LaFrance, in their earlier letter. So I think if you go back to Mr. Um, Elmer's first concern, it said that the between the markers was 15.41. Um, you'd have to go back to the map to go look at that. Is is it my understanding correct is that extra seven feet goes from the marker to the edge of the curb. That's correct. Okay. So that's that extension out to the curb line into the town right away. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Stop. Mr. LaFrance, in your answer just so I can understand it, because I'm not entirely yeah. sure. Sure. Can you answer to Mr. Elmer's concerns over protecting the markers? How how were you planning on doing that? I would put the stones to the edge, even though we could put it to the center line, because that does show the actual yeah. property line. But mm -hmm. if I keep it on the edge, which would be, I don't know, about three inches from the center line of the stone, leaving the expo stone exposed, then it shouldn't be any harm to the, to the actual marker. So it's just gonna be more on your property line or more yeah. within your property? My, yeah, my, the stone will be more on my property line by four inches or so. Gotcha, okay. Yeah. That was really my only question. Does anyone else have any questions or concerns? Hello? <laughs> yes, no. <laughs> Does it, do any of the other commission members have any questions or concerns for the applicant? I have none. Nothing from me. No. Eric or Todd? No, nor do I. Okay. Um, Mr. or Ms. Lef Mrs. LaFrance, do you have anything additional at this moment that you would like to add? No, I think we're fine, right? Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. Well then, would anyone in the audience like to speak for this act? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this act? Mr. Mr. Elmer, is that you? Yeah, I'm here somewhere, I think. Can you hear me? Okay, we hear you. Okay, uh, sorry, I've had some computer problems. Uh, in driving around Mystic, the, uh, I see all over the place shrubberies and bushes and things in the town right of way. My front porch is actually in the town right of way. Uh, it bushes and these things come and go. A stone wall going right down to the curb there, uh, I would think would kind of look out of place. I would think going down to that stone marker and if Mr. Uh, LaFrance wanted to take it over perpendicular to his uh, his driveway, that would look nice. But uh, just coming out on an angle and coming off at the curb, that's a, that's a stone wall. And that's gonna be there for a long time. And it's also over his, uh, the underground power feeds for his house too. 
So these are things to take into consideration, but I have not seen one stone wall in any of my travels around the neighborhood that goes all the way out to the curb. And I would like it, I'd like to see the stone wall stop at the marker. Uh, and I'd like to propose that for your consideration. The, uh, as far as is the La Francis being able to keep the stone markers uncovered, uh, as long as they can do that. I wanted several inches put in between the edges of those stone markers. Uh, I don't think that would hurt, but uh, they seem adamant about that. And with the exception of the stone wall going all the way out to the curb, and that I would like to see the, uh, a, a gap between those markers and the wall, uh, I'm okay with everything they want to do here. Okay. So your concern primarily is that last jog that goes out to the that goes out to the street. Right, the one that goes past the property marker and goes down to the curb. Okay. That'd be the only stone wall I've seen that goes to the curb anywhere around. Could I comment with that on that, that stone wall to the curbs? You may. I own another property on 30 Pearl Street. And um, I built two stone walls there. And they're both to the curb. And uh, if you look further up on Cliff Street, the people that just bought a new house up there, they've just got stone walls to the curb as well. And it really doesn't hurt anything. And then the other from the curb, uh, <clears throat> that can be moved at any time. Stones can be moved just like anything else. They're less permanent than a tree. Well, oh. it was dry. Okay, then if you're if your stone walls down on, you're talking about your your places down on Pearl Street. That's correct. If they went to the curb, they'd be across the sidewalk. Well, I'm saying That's the curb. It was to the curb. They it was the to the curb. In after the fact. Exactly. They put the sidewalk in after the fact. Well, they're not there now. Okay. All uh, right. Well, how about this? Does do any of the commission members have any additional questions for Mr. Elmer or Mr. LaFrance? No. None for me. No. Todd? No. So everybody's all set from the applicant and the audience? I'm good. Okay, D did, would, it, would anybody else in the audience like to speak um, in regard to this application? I made, wanna make sure I didn't miss anybody. No? Okay, then HDC, I've lost my number because I was trying to look up some pictures, uh, where are we? HDC 20-74 is closed. Um, HDC 21-01, 424 High Street, Whit Raymond Williams. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Hi, good evening. Uh, my name is Mirza Smagic. I will be representing Momentum Solar, proposing a roof mounted on 424 High Street for the no. owner, Raymond Williams. Probably, I don't know, probably post it tomorrow. It's... And Mr. we Lillard, have, Oops. I'm sorry, sorry. Nope, go ahead. No, I think there was a little, there was other background noise. I just wanted to make sure you were still there. Yep, I'm here. Okay. So we are hoping or trying to install solar panels uh, for the homeowner Raymond Williams at 424 High Street. We're proposing uh, 34 modules that come out, the uh, system size comes out to 11.9 kilowatts. It will be facing the south um, opposite of the driveway on the roof as well as the shed.
there will be um, 27 modules on the, uh, the house roof and 10 on the shed. Make sure I did that right. Apologize about that. 24 on the house and 10 on the shed. Is that the side of the eye right there? Um, is there another? Yes. Is there another photo? It would be on the opposite side of the driveway. It's a little tough to see. So it'll be on the other side of that. Is the blue in the shed? Just where the little one? Yes. And that's actually a perfect photo of where it will be going on the opposite side of that, actually. So that's the shed? Correct. Okay. So, so, so the, the solar panels are on the front of that, that shed or the back? It'll be on the back of the shed. Uh, if you're facing, um, the house from the driveway, it'll be on the back of that. And then if you're facing the house from the driveway, it'll be in the opposite of the house. Peter, can you keep going down to the picture of the house? I think it's the next one after these, these diagrams. Did you want to look at that layout quick right there? Because I think that was the side he was looking at there. Yeah, and that's the back of the shed there on the right. There we are. Correct. All right, I'll scroll back down then. Yeah. Oh, can you, yeah, you stop right there. Okay. Got it. Thank you. All right. Does anyone have any additional questions for the applicant? Is the picture we're looking at now where the roof, oh, can we pause, pause right there, Peter? Is that where the solar panels will be because that faces the same size as the shed's uh, opposite roof line. Yes, I believe so. Okay, because there's like, we're, so we're facing north in this picture, correct? Mm, yes. Okay. All right, then that makes sense. Thank you. Do you want me to go back to their cut sheet so you can see the location from that? They're facing west, but because North High Street runs north to, north to south, doesn't it? There, there was a. There's a directional right up at the top here. Yep, at the yep, correct. Yes, yeah, yeah, so you were facing west. Yeah, it's facing west, you're right here. Oh. Yes, you're correct. Yeah, okay. west west the slight southwest. Okay, that clarifies. Thank you. I was totally confused.
Does anyone have any other questions for the applicant? Yeah, well, it's, it's really it's really the shed is facing um, west and the house panels are facing south. Right. And, and they are they are on the the, the main uh, structure of the house and they're also on that lower part that you were talking about bill off the back yes there will be no what color are the solar panels black okay any other questions none for me i'm good also I'm good. All right. I'm good. All right. Um, thank you. Would anyone in the audience like to speak for this application? Would anyone in the audience like to speak against this application? HDC 21-01 is closed. So I will um, open our hearings back up for deliberations and just as a, as a comment, only commission members can speak during this time. So I'll open HDC 20-74, open for deliberations. This is 51 Cliff Street, uh, Thomas and Vicky France. This was the uh, Stonewall edition. So are there any comments or discussion on this particular application? I have one question. Um, Peter, I was trying to pull the guidelines up and I couldn't do it fast enough. What isn't it 24 inches or less? It's not considered. Um, it doesn't come before us. I couldn't find it quick enough. For a wall? Yes. Is it 18? I, Is it 18? I was yeah, trying to verify it. I couldn't remember. I think it, I think I think uh, Eric's right. I think it's 18. 18. Okay. Yeah. I just kind of wanted that as a point of reference. Yeah, Heather's wall. I think it was. I think that came up then. Yeah, I think this one it did 18 inches. It came up at that one. Okay. I personally don't really have an issue of it running to the road. I mean, it's his property, even if it's in the right of way. If if the town wants him to move it, they're gonna make him move it. I am of the same milk. I mean, the the reference to the lines, that's not really our concern. Our our concern is entirely different. Um, and I was trying to pull up pictures of other properties where um, structures went through the right of way and, and you know even to the neighbor's comment I think he said his own porch was in the right of way um, so I don't really have an issue with with the stone wall at all I, I think that it would probably be a nice addition yeah, reusing the stones from the property I think is better than you know trashing them or and also it's a, not a character and also it's a dry stone wall is not like if, if someone needs to access underneath it for whatever reason, it's not major work. No. Todd and Don, any comments? You know, I, I, I agree with those comments. And I, and I think that as regards to monuments, um, I mean, if, he, if, if Mr. Elmer wanted them left exposed, I think that that's fine. I think the applicant has, has done that, but I, I really, I really don't think it's necessary for them to come in a couple more inches. I mean, the monuments are what they are, and if they're visible, they may be now, but they probably won't be for long anyway. So um, I think he's accommodating Mr. Elmer's request in that regard. Don? Well, the only thing is maybe uh, in, a, in our approval that we would specify that the monuments would be left uh, clear of the wall. That'd be my only suggestion. Well, does does his letter become part of the exhibit, Sarah? Yes. Well, Francis. So he basically said in his letter, Don, that he yeah. would leave the monuments exposed. So I think we're probably covered on that. All right. We, All right. I'll move I move to approve. A second. I'll do a roll call. All in favor? Moriarty, aye. Levinson, aye. Goodman? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. Brady? Aye. Uh, the application is approved. Uh, 
HDC 21-01. This was the solar panels on 424 High Street. Any comments or motions? I move to approve. I'll second. Um, I'm just gonna say that I have zero problem with, with the solar panels on that particular I'm with you. property. Um, I'll do a roll call. Moriarty, aye. Ferguson? Aye. Brady? Aye. Goodman? Aye. Levinson? I'd say I, but I hope we never approve that porch, but it's a side note. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> well played, Don. The application is approved. All right, so pre-application hearings. I am on my iPad tonight, so I can't see if anybody's out there. There are some people out there. I don't know if they want to raise their hand if they're interested in speaking pre-app. Because I can't see them, Peter, if oh, you I got one. calling one. them. Yep, Christopher not. He's Thank raising you. his hand. That's going to unmute right now. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, we are going to be um, asking some questions about 17 Gravel Street tonight. And, and actually, um, the, the proposed buyer for the home, our, our, our client, uh, he was going to kick things off. And so that's Dan Grace, if you see him online. So if you could bring Dan up first, and then I, I think we'll proceed with some slides. Good evening. Can, can you guys hear me? Because my, my video is frozen. You can we hear can. you. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Uh, thanks for your introduction, Chris. Yes, my name is Dan Grace. Um, thank you very much for taking the time here. I am sort of a prospective buyer with 17 gravel. So this is, this is before pre-application bordering on pre-everything. Um, I was given uh, basically three weeks, um, concluding next week, uh, a, a period of some due diligence, architectural review. Um, I was happy I could even get this uh, audience uh, just to get some indication of, of what may or may not um, be applicable or be allowable. Um, I read the handbook about 300 times before even making an offer and whatever, trying to understand it. Um, and then subsequent to the offer, I retained uh, Chris Fernand and MBV Architects to sort of assist here, making some investment before the, any purchase. Uh, as well as an inspection uh, performed, we got the results back from that and that was um, largely a sort of a state of disrepair from, from structural in the basement all the way to really all the mechanicals, end of useful life, windows, et cetera, et cetera. So, and some rot and blah, blah, blah. So that's probably not unusual for you guys, given the, the historical nature of everything. Um, so, so that's where I am. And then a few other elements come into play. I'm just going to let, uh, let Chris sort of, you know, run through a presentation. I'm not sure what level of, of confidence I can get, you know, this quickly or, or, or tonight. Um, but, but hopefully, if nothing else, I've, I've met you all. And if I do this again, then, uh, then maybe we'll, uh, we'll meet again. But um, Chris, if you can hear me, hear you one and one, you can kick off from your side and go from there. Thank you. Sure. Uh, to do a screen share, do I, do I need to use the uh, tab at the bottom to share a slideshow? Peter? Sorry, I was muted there. Um, you should be able to just do new share. Okay, I'm trying to do a screen share and it says you cannot start screen share while others are participating. Should be able, to, I think it's because I was controlling it at that moment. You should be able to now. Okay. Let's see. Okay, can everybody see the um, the two pictures here? Yes. Yes. Okay. I just wanted to be sure I wasn't sharing my desktop and, and you see the slides here. So uh, I'm going to try to go through this um, fairly quickly. So if anybody would like me to slow down, um, please let me know uh, just, just to try to uh, respect everyone's time here tonight. I think uh, we're trying to just get a couple um, 
you know, 50,000 foot view ideas uh, answered to help Mr. Grace, you know, in his confidence of, of moving forward with the property or not. And I think we also realize that we may not be able to answer some questions tonight, but even if there was sort of a, a temperature indication of, of possibility or not, uh, I think that would be helpful to Mr. Grace. So uh, again, 17 Gravel Street, uh, the uh, image at the top is how the house sits uh, currently. And then there's an image at the bottom here, uh, which shows the house and its adjacent neighbors. Uh, 17 is in the middle and the adjacent neighbors each side. Uh, I just want to point out sort of how this house sits fairly low uh, compared to the adjacent neighbors. Because the first thing I'd like to talk about is uh, FEMA flood district. So this is a, a map from FEMA online mapping system and it shows that the house is in a zone AE elevation 11. And the, the property is actually the red box. It's not the, uh, the red dot to the north. So um, we have not taken on any survey work yet. So we do not have an elevation certificate. So we're, we're trying to ballpark an, an idea of where we're at. Um, so this is from the Groton GIS website. And uh, turning on the topography shows there's a uh, spot elevation of 6.91 in the backyard. Uh, 17 is in the middle of the, sh the sheet here. So if, if that's uh, 6.91, we can roughly assume grade around the house is elevation seven. And I'm just gonna sort of follow the math on the right hand side of the sheet here. Uh, with grade B and elevation seven, the floor is, is probably approximately uh, 18 inches above grade. So that means existing floor is about elevation 8.5. Uh, and again, we're in a FEMA flood zone AE11. Uh, Mr. Grace would like to do uh, a substantial amount of work here and, and bring the house up to date, uh, replace materials um, that are favorable to the commission. And so uh, we're going to bump up against uh, well past the threshold of substantial improvement, which for this home is $140,000. Given that, uh, there's a question to the commission about can we raise the house from 8.5 to 12 in order to comply with FEMA flood zone uh, regulations and requirements? That would likely uh, need a new foundation, a new concrete foundation, which we could likely face with a granite material in order to keep a historic appearance to it, uh, much like the foundation now. Uh, so that's, that's the first question to the commission is, could we raise the house to elevation 12 to comply with FEMA flood zone regulations? Personally, depending on how you face that foundation and what the look of it was, my answer would be personally, yes. Yeah, I agree with Eric. I, and I and I understand the limitations you have that you can only spend so much otherwise um, in terms of improvements. So you're kind of in a box, you know. Right. We, you know, putting a significant investment into this home, um, you know, long term, you would want this to comply with flood zone regulations and not be at risk of damage. So I think his Eric's point is is well taken. It's and you obviously probably can't show us that now, but how you treat the foundation um, right. in terms of, you know, I suppose lessening the effect of the raise of an existing house. You pointed out that the house is, at the moment, it's it's overshadowed by its uh, abutting neighbors in terms of overall height. So um, I don't think that's so much an issue. It's more just, you know, what's it look like from the street? Okay, and I have a slide later in the uh, in the set here that can sh that shows an example that I think uh, will be helpful, helpful tonight. So, okay, so I'm hearing that uh, we could likely raise the house to comply with flood um, as long as it's done appropriately. This is the residential car, street card. And just to point out um, down under valuation in the middle here, the building itself 
has a value of roughly 280. So that's where the substantial improvement number of 140 comes from. Okay, uh, the, the second item here is uh, things that may or maybe we cannot do to the house. And I'd like to just go through these quickly and then see uh, what your reaction might be to, yes, we could do those, no, we couldn't, or you know, it's a possibility with an appropriate design. So start with these bays on the front here on the first story. Uh, they are in addition to the house at some point, uh, you know, the main house is, is a cape. And so could these bays be removed uh, is the first question. The next is the sort of Gothic entry piece above the front door, which is uh, likely another addition from another time period uh, that's in disrepair. Could that be removed? The third item is the, the gable roof on the second story. Could that be removed and reconfigured with a new dormer or new dormers that are appropriate uh, on the second story that would uh, provide more views to the river out front and, and more light to the second floor? Fourth item is adding a, uh, the possibility of a porch to the front of the house. As you can see, there's a porch on the side and we continue that same language to the front of the house using the same round columns and, and detail there. Um, there's an idea of, of possibly raising uh, the roof maybe a foot to provide a little more room inside or possibly uh, incrementally raising the pitch of the roof slightly uh, to match neighboring properties. Straightening the sagging ridge, it's likely a, uh, just a structural issue. And then another item is on the rear here, uh, the, the bottom two images. This is a two-story addition to the backside of the house that really has no historic uh, value, should we say. And so uh, the question of could this be removed entirely and be rebuilt with an a new addition that's much more appropriate uh, to the commission. You can see the back of this house from Pearl Street. So I don't know if you could maybe comment on those few bullet point items. I think, well, I, I'll, I'll say something first. As far and the easy one is as far as the rear addition is concerned, uh, anything you did to that would have to be an improvement. I agree right. With that. <laughs> I, think we all, I think we all agree with that. Yeah, the first low, thing off. low hanging fruit. Yeah, but that's the easy one. I think that on the the front of the house, it it's very difficult to answer that because what you're proposing is in fact a substantial modification of the appearance of the house in the street. I mean, if you were if you remove the the bays, which in my personal opinion are a little bit overdone anyway in terms of scale. To the rest of the house, but you're basically talking about re-sculpting it and redefining the street appearance. And so when you talk about dormers, I mean, I, I get that, but, but if you're talking about a shed dormer, for example, I would say, I don't think I get too far with something like that uh, because it would be, I think just such a total visual change. But it's hard to comment because we don't really know what you're going to do. Sure. Right. And, 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 you know, all of us fully realize that. But I'll go to the next slide. And, and the owner has um, done some sketches to sort of help himself, you know, and us kind of understand, uh, you know, maybe a dormer configuration. Maybe there's three dormers up front. Maybe there is a, a Nantucket style dormer up front, which exists in the neighborhood. But I think in all cases, the intent would be something that's appropriate, uh, something that's in the neighborhood, something that fits in. And I think, you know, some of these questions go back to sort of defining the essence of the house being, you know, a cape, a simple cape uh, at its core and, and getting back to some of that with, you know, these later additions that were put on like the bay windows. Um, you know, I think there's also a question where if the bay windows were significant, you know, could they be rebuilt 
in a different format, sort of a uh, more shallow, like the uh, image in the top left here. So they project a little less. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't have a problem with that. I think as far as the shed door, what I said before, I mean, I don't have a big objection to the, the proposed shed dormer that's flanked by the two gable ended dormers. Um, I was more concerned about a flat straight shed dormer and what that might look like. I think to Todd's point though, and I, I agree, which is it, it is a pretty significant project. So it's tough to say whether I would lean one way or the other just without really seeing what you're gonna do. I wouldn't say no, I just, I would need to see it as a, as a cohesive plan. Except for the tearing off the back, go for it. Go for it. <laughs> I, I'm of the same opinion of, as Todd and Eric in the sense that, you know, I, I wouldn't say, no, you can't do that, don't touch that building, but it's, it's hard to say, yes, go ahead, buy it, because I know that's what you're up against. You know, your due diligence period expires in a week um, saying without knowing what it is that you're, that you're actually proposing. Sure. And, and you I, know, um, Chris, I was going to say one thing. I, I do agree with you though, that it is a hodgepodge of, I mean, it seems like stuff was just added over the last probably 200 years. So right. I wouldn't, you know, as opposed to like the house to the left or the house to the right or the house to the left. I mean, it's not like you've, you know, have this classic design you've got a lot of stuff going on that wasn't original so you know more so yes than no is what i'm thinking. okay yeah i agree and i think that's that's what we'd be striving for is like getting back to the essence of, of the cape and and starting with that as as our foundation and then building onto that with appropriate features yeah and, and i also think that when we look at redesigns like this or when we get applications for more windows and whatever we a lot of it's in recognition of the fact that when a lot of these houses were built you know what you saw out your front window wasn't as significant a concern or something that was highly desired as it is today for whatever reason coal barges and sure yeah who, who knows but but you know, i certainly think that you know if you have a house that's sitting here on gravel street the view out the front is a significant um, reason for buying the house. And the second floor really doesn't have much of anything except that single gable. Okay. Uh, Mr. Grace, did you have any questions while we're talking about possible um, design features and modifications? I mean, uh, am, I, am I unmuted, I think? Yes. I hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. No, I just, I just want to make notes specific to uh, the, the canopy thing above the front door and the in you know, many areas of the uh, of the current uh, bay windows, um, they're, they're all effectively need to be replaced anyway. I know all the windows do, and that takes up most of it. And then there's um, some significant rot, I think primarily because of the vegetation that's around them. Um, I, I do have pictures that could be shared or even the inspection or whatever. But uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of work there anyway you know, just sort of, and I completely agree that the, the proportion of those was, was frankly the first reason that I'm like, geez, can we do something with these? Um, and then things just kept getting added to it and then this was no good and this was no good. So, so that, that was a, uh, I'm like, well, you know, I'm not gonna be, you know, I can still, you know, maintain the theme of everything, well, not everything, but maintain the theme of the bay windows anyway, maybe if they're shallower, that would, that would still work on a porch or something to that effect. So. So I just wanted to make note, the, the, the condition of those is, is not very good either, including the roof on them, so. Yeah, but hey, technically speaking, the condition of them is, is, to, is kind of irrelevant to us. Um, that just is what it is. But as I look again at the front of this house, you know, the little gingerbread bread, uh, you know, porch thing over the front door is, it kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. No, where does that come from? Right. Yeah, it doesn't belong with the rest of the house. And I was going to say it's like a cape slap with a bunch of Italianite. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe yeah, you should make. Maybe you should make the front look like the back edition. You know, and no one <laughs> so controversial. <laughs> then we can take them both down. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you know. Uh, I'm highly confident, 
with my partners, Bob Mercer and Bill Birchie who have been practicing in the area 35 years and have done plenty of, of homes in the historic district that we could get a, a design um, that's uh, sympathetic with everyone, you know, and, and especially the commission. So I, I feel good about uh, feedback. Dan, any, any additional comment there? Um, no, no. I think, okay. I think we're, uh, we're, we're, we're good. We can sort of move forward. Happy to hear about the back. That's, that's for sure. <laughs> so Thanks. then um, I'll, I'll close out with this. If, if we back to the first topic of complying with FEMA flood zone requirements, raising the house, uh, putting in a new flood resistant, flood compliant uh, foundation, and filling that into adjacent grade in order to meet FEMA regulations. Uh, we would no longer have a basement under the house. It would be a crawl space and, and all mechanical equipment would have to come out of the crawl space, out of the basement and be on the first floor or above. So the house would get jacked up in the air, uh, a new foundation constructed underneath of it and then possibly a handful of modifications that we just discussed and uh, removing the back addition and rebuilding a whole new addition. And we've had experience with this lately. Uh, this is a project in the Stonington Borough where we did uh, the intent here and, and what we did was documented the existing house. This was approved by the Stonington Borough uh, Historic Commission and to be rebuilt uh, from the inside out. And when we got into construction, it ended up that there was literally nothing to save in the, in the existing house. It was so cobbled together, rotten, uh, undersized members, structurally deficient. I mean, everything you could throw at it. And so we went back to the commission and said, we'll document the existing house, uh, but allow us to take it down do a brand new uh, compliant foundation and rebuild the structure new uh, with new construction uh, to match the documented home uh, so that it's FEMA compliant, uh, building code compliant, high wind compliant because it's on the water. And so this is an example of the process. Um, you know, the images up top are the original home, the images on the bottom are the new. And you can even see on the foundation uh, on the bottom images, especially the one on the right, we captured the stones from the old foundation and had them sawn in half and then applied to the new foundation so that it's the same exact detail. And so a question of could we, could we consider uh, something like that for this house? if we're doing new foundation, raising it from elevation 8.5 to 12, rebuilding and having to repair, you know, much of the home, a significant removal and, and rebuild of new addition on the back. Uh, could this be a candidate for a new construction rebuild with a, with a fully documented process of what's there now? Well, you, I don't think anyone would dismiss it out of hand, but you would have to document the condition of the house um, to justify taking it down. I mean, in this example you give here, the, 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 the rebuilt house is very similar to the old house, but it's actually a much better looking house. Yeah, to Todd's point, I think I would agree. And having done a lot of historic homes in the town, you're either going to find some great stuff or you're going to find junk. And, you know, that house probably you're going to find the latter. But right. if you were to do that, I just would say come with a plan that's similar. If you're going to take the cape down, you know, go back with a cape. If you could, if you want to take the cape down, you're going to come with a 6,000 square foot Nantucket home. I wouldn't probably go for that. No, I, I think in all cases, and that's a, that's a fair um, observation, but I think in all cases, we all agree that we have to honor the essence of, of the cape, the core of the house that's there now, which is a cape. And then, you know, consider those design modifications, 
you know, removing the bays or rebuilding the bays differently, uh, different dormer configuration, second floor roof. So those modifications, but, uh, you know, on, on the Cape. I mean, I you know, look at stuff all the time and like, I have to be honest with you, like these two views, the 2016 to 2020, I can barely tell the difference. So I think he did a right. fabulous job on keeping the original house, you know, in character. Yeah, in character. But you know, you made the windows bigger. I mean, you know, and it, it looks better. The, the upper one, the upper windows look dwarfed out anyway. So. Small, right. Yeah. yeah. We, we well, located the entry. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Load the entry to the middle. If you did something similar, I, I wouldn't be opposed to it in any, any way. Maybe it's just my eyes. It doesn't seem like the newer one is that much higher than the old, or am I missing something? Yeah. Yeah. No, we're we're roughly the same height, but it had to do with with rebuilding the foundation so that it could resist flood waters from the back. This sits right on Stonington yeah, Harbor. I'm actually familiar with this house. So. Yeah. Yeah, but they didn't actually raise the house, I don't think, Don. So you're yeah. right. That's this. Yeah. This yeah. Different. I was I was thinking the same thing. This is like apples and oranges in many ways because there's no raising of this house. It's just facade work and structural work. Chris, who who built it? I'm just curious. Uh, this house was Gil Bliss. And actually, I'd like to, um, if, if we could get, could you allow Bill Birchie to comment? I, I think he wants to maybe add some more about the process with this house. Of course. Thank you. I, I, I'm muted. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, no, I think Chris did a, a very good job. A, it is exactly to an inch the same height as when we started. And that was the whole premise that we were, we were exactly replacing. And you've seen our types of drawings before we even start designing, we document the existing house. And we had documented all the corner boards and trim and whatever. So we were able to go to the commission uh, the zoning board in, in Stonington and say, this is documented. It will go back exactly like we're taking it down. <laughs> and uh, they they were pleased with us doing that. Um, yeah, actually, the, the windows are bigger, but as we got all the framing, because we could never see under all the plaster, but when we, when we got it out the house, the original windows were as big as were shown in 220, the short ones pre-existed were some uh, vinyl windows somebody put in along the way. Hmm. And it just kept, kept covering up their sins. Uh, it, you know, this is a little unusual. And I've been doing historic houses for a long time. And I said, you know, if we're going to make, and I live here in, in, in Mystic 1830s house. And, you know, to maintain our inventory, it, it, it sometimes you got to, you know, we got to put this all back together. It's just not a matter of going in and putting in sister joists and working on the floors and the sagging roofs. And if we're going to have this last for another hundred years, we're going to run into a few projects. It's actually better to take the essence of the core, the, well, more than the essence, take the core design and reestablish it. And with the flood danger down there, I, I just, how can you say, go ahead and put in a million dollars of renovation then Hurricane Sandy 2 comes by and it's all flooded out again. You know? yeah. So uh, we're, we're dealing with two things here, the condition of the existing house and, and the flood zone. But this would show, you know, when we say we're gonna replace it, we replaced it. Green that is probably you can with this type of thing, I think. At least that's what I think we're saying. I'm sorry, could you say that again? I, I'm having a hard time hearing. I think we're all saying that this would be a good candidate for something like that, considering just the condition of the of the house currently. Okay. But again, to Todd's point, staying in the essence of what is there. Okay. So none of the um, possible design modifications, 
none of them set off like any red alarms, did they? That it's definitely a, a no-go zone. I mean, I, I got the sense from the group that all of these are possibilities if we can provide something that's appropriate that works. I would say that's a fair statement. Okay. So Dan, I'll, I'll turn it back to you if, if you have any last questions. I, I, I think I feel pretty good about um, where we're at and, and the answers provided. So if, if you have anything to close it out, Dan. Uh, no, uh, thank you again. Um, yeah, I do think we've had some some level of of confidence here. Um, just, I mean, this isn't happening tomorrow, tomorrow anyway. Uh, there's a lot in the way, but um, you know, there's flexibility on our side too. We, we, we get it, I guess would be the right way to put it. Um, so with, with certain elements of it, um, you know, capturing the essence, all that, I'm, I'm, I'm all for that part of it. Um, if we have a few things to, to talk over, we can, and then we'll just take the next step and, and go from there. Great. Uh, well, I want to thank the commission for allowing us to, to go through these and um, hearing us tonight. So thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks again. Thank, thank you. you. All right. Peter, is there anybody else in the audience? There is, but I think, let me see. Nobody knew. No, OK. I've lost my agenda. Um, public communications. Oh, thank you. Are there any public communications? Nope. nope. Uh, approval of the minutes from January 5, 2021. I move to approve. Second. I'll do a roll call. Moriarty, aye. Brady, aye. Goodman. Aye. Goodman? Aye. Levinson? Aye. Ferguson? Aye. All right. Old business. I believe this is you, Eric. Yeah, I just wanted to get the updated material list over. So um, it's in the middle of that uh, most recent set of plans. Um, okay. There's a bunch of fire stuff in there. Just ignore it. I was just on the plans. Okay. And just to refresh my memory, you were changing. I can't remember. Peter had been a little vague in the beginning with materials. So it said like PVC or wood, um, but it didn't really specify anything. So uh, if you just scroll down, Pete. So I just, down in the middle, I just cleaned up the material list. Oh. Okay. Thank like you. I said, yeah, I just said like asphalt shingles and that was it, but it didn't say like where or what. So gotcha. right. we ended up using all cedar clapboard. Um, we used a lot of wood trim instead of PVC. Um, the only real PVC on it is the large crown at the top. Um, I think he said like wood decking, but we used EPE wood decking. Um, it was just stuff like that. I just figured it'd be a good idea to put it all together in one place. Okay. All right, thanks. Um, other old business? Oh, election of officers. I would say we still table that. Any objections? No, no, no it's fine. All right, any new business? I think we have two new members coming on. Well, that's what we're, that's where hold off, I think, all in the election of officers. Let's wait till everybody gets seated. Yeah. You know their names? Anybody know? Uh, Max Leonard, and then it was also... Uh, Bonnie Nault. Yeah. Remember Bonnie Don? She was on when you were on, weren't you? Was yeah, she? yeah. Yeah, I remember yeah. Bonnie. Yeah, so... Is, is Max Leonard in his 30s? Yeah, it's John and Julie's son. Oh, uh, okay former student of yours yeah oh brother <laughs> all right jack though i don't know if you had jack too yeah i had jack i had max i had them all any new business yeah. all right then i am going to move to adjourn
Second. All right, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Good night everybody. Mm -hmm.